Hey guys, what's up? Vinayak here. Hope you're all doing well. This video will be a very special video. I'll be talking about the Kalman filter and how you can implement one yourself in C++ and Arduino. So let's get started. So it's very important in engineering, but let's talk about it first. So every electronic device in the real world, a cell phone, an airplane, they have a sensor, something that is used to measure a value. So for example, a GPS and accelerometer and so on. But in the real world, sensors have noise. I mean, like they aren't perfect, right? So let's say, for example, you're flying in a plane at a very high speed and the plane will have some sensors on it. But obviously you also have things like turbulence, uh, you know, the plane shakes itself. The sensors will like won't give you an accurate value because the sensors will also move, right? The turbulence will hit the sensor. The wind will create this like noise on it and the sensor will not be perfect. This is where the Kalman filter comes into play in the sense that it will provide you an optimal sensor reading from a noisy measurement. This noise is what I'm saying is this uncertainty because which you can't predict it, right? In the real world, noise you cannot predict. It's based on what the environment is. So for example, rain, snow, wind, they can all create noise on your system. In this picture here, I have a very quick example of how a Kalman filter works on a launch vehicle. So let's first take a look at this whole model here. You have your guidance alg algorithms, you have your control algorithms and filters. You also have things like your launch vehicle model itself. The launch vehicle will have sensors. So like SpaceX, NASA, they all have sensors on, on their vehicles, just like how airplanes have sensors on them. So launch vehicles have things like an IMU, which is called an inertial measurement unit, a accelerometer and a GPS these sensors will have noise so you can see how the sensors go into the navigation filter and this is your common filter so these filters will filter out the sensor noise and it'll output to the flight computer the the position so for example the the rocket's pitch angle the location on the map the y location and so on most of you guys who have a controls class most likely you will not be doing this Kalman filtering because this is actually a separate course it's called estimation so estimation is simply how you can estimate your state from the noisy measurement and that's where the Kalman filter is very important on here we have an Arduino example of a Kalman filter so you can see very easily how the Kalman filter does filter out some noise from your system but it's not perfect right so the Kalman filter itself is not very perfect but there are ways to make it better and remove more noise from your system. Before we do the Kalman filter, let's first talk about probability and statistics. And that's very important to know because the Kalman filter is based on these very important concepts. So first of all, we have a random variable. Let's call that X. So X can take on any value. So for example, negative one, 10, 20, 14.5, doesn't matter. The average value of this random variable is called the mean which is called the expected value. It is mathematically represented by E brackets of X. You also have something called the covariance. So if you want to understand this, let's say you're, you want to lose some weight, right? And for that, you have to eat less. So you can say that the more weight you have to lose and the number of calories you need to eat, they will have a strong negative correlation. So the less weight you have to lose, the more calories you can eat, right? But the more you have to lose, the less you can eat. So they have a very strong negative correlation. And the correlation is a direct indicator of the covariance. So the covariance, you can see how the two variables vary together. So that means if the correlation is very high, they will have a very high covariance. The variance is given by the covariance of the random variable with itself. And lastly, you have something called a normal distribution which is in essence the very important concepts in stats. It has a mean and a standard deviation sigma. So those two are very important to know. Next, we can move on to the Kalman filter now itself. So this, these equations you must know very well before you actually do the implementation. So we can first define the process model. It's given by xk plus one, where k is like the discrete time step. So let's say you're simulating every 10 seconds. So 10 seconds, that's k equals one, 20 seconds, k equals two, and so on. 
You also have the measurement model. It's given by y of k is equal to h times x plus v. And w and v are those noise terms, right? You see how the noise is added onto the system. And the idea is to estimate this x. So what's x, right? X, x is the state you're trying to estimate. So for example, position, velocity, acceleration, they will be in this x vector. And you have to try and estimate them by using the Kalman filter. You can call that estimate x hat. Okay, so that's very important. You also have next the covariance terms of Q and R. P represents the error covariance between the initial x and the estimate of x. So, you know, it's just x minus x hat, essentially. This value of k is very important. It's called the Kalman gain. And we can assume that h and phi are constant. For linear filters, they are. But for nonlinear filters, they're not. This value of k determines how stable your filter is. So for example, if k is essentially too high, then you're done. It's not going to converge. Your filter will not work properly. So here we have the pseudocode of the Kalman filter. And this is how you will implement it in C++ or any other programming language. The idea is to first obtain this noisy measurement at each time step. Then you will call your Kalman filter function in which you will update the Kalman gain, you will update the estimate, and then you will return this estimated value. So that, that's how that works. And here I have the C++ Pro program where I defined pretty much a noisy signal. So you can see this picture here, we have a very noisy signal. It's basically a sawtooth wave. And our goal is to remove all this noise and get the best estimate. So it should go from negative one to one at 0.6 seconds then go back down to negative one and then just keep going along, right? So you see how there's so much of noise and the idea is to filter out that noise by using the Kalman filter. For example, we can now look at this basic C++ program I wrote. Now this isn't the filter. I'll be showing you guys how to implement the filter right now. But this program here is basically scanning all those noise values into an array and storing it in an array called noisy. Now, in the real world, you won't have something like this. And for an Arduino, for example, you know, you can do this, right? Because the system is simulating in real time. But this was just, just to demonstrate how the common filter works. And what I'll be doing is I'll be taking in these noisy measurements one at a time. I'll be applying my common filter on the, those measurements coming in. So one at a time and then returning the optimal state estimate. So we can do that now very easily and let's start implementing it in C++. So now we are in C++ and we can start. So the common filter will be defined in a function format. I will be calling it Kalman and it will take in a parameter u. So u is the noisy measurement which comes in one at a time. And the objective of this Kalman function is to filter out this u and give you an estimate called u hat. So we can copy and paste this function definition and we you can start. First thing you have to do is define some constants which are initial values and we will be defining this as static because in C++ a static variable is only initialized once and it saves memory so it does help to use statics whenever you can. Define r, define h, define q and define p. So r is actually 10 but I made it more because the more you set R the more noise it will reduce and I will explain this concept in more detail after we look at the common filter results. We can define Q, we can define P. Those are your error covariances so that's very important to have and we can also define U hat. So U hat is the estimate of U. So the idea is that u is this noisy measurement and u hat is what you're trying to return to your system sensor. So you have to estimate it, right? Next, we can move on and define the initial Kalman gain k as zero. So we can begin. So let's first calculate the Kalman gain. It'll be p multiplied by h divided by h times p times h plus r. So update this Kalman gain. Next, you can then calculate the u hat so for every value of u you will 
calculate u hat so that will be u hat plus k multiplied by u minus h times u hat so on the left hand side the u hat is the new value and on the right side it is the old value the reason why i can do this is because i'm using static variables so they don't need to initialize again and between each function call the variable will remain the same so it knows what it's doing we can then update the error covariance the projection equation so that's p is equal to 1 minus k times h times p plus q and then we simply return u hat so that's it that's your simple common filter loop and now we can go within the main program and actually apply this common filter so let's do that let's first filter out these noisy measurements and bring a comment there so let's first initialize an empty array of filtered values so i'll call that filtered and it'll be a double because we are returning double from the common filter so I'll call that double and then so now for each and every value of this noisy measurement we will apply the filter so let's do that within a loop because in the real world once again the noisy measurements come in one at a time and your idea is to apply the filter and give you the estimated state so all you do is you up call the common filter and that's it so call in this common filter here and we can print it out to the screen by using C out and when you do this you will obtain the filter values as you see there next you can copy and paste this into Excel and make some plots to see what it did so you can see how that when I copy this into notepad and then copy it into Excel I have a bunch of plots here and it looks pretty good so let's take a look at the results of the common filter you can see that I tried this for two values of R the second value of R was 10 squared or 100. You can see very clearly that the more you set R, the more noise will be reduced from the system. And the less you make R, the less noise will be reduced. But you have to look at this Kalman gain very carefully. The more you have the Kalman gain, the slower your filter will be. So the idea is to make your filter fast, but also reduce noise as much as possible. So if you make the filter way too fast it'll not reduce much noise because it's too fast right you have to find the balance between speed and noise removal and this is only the case when you have a constant q and r in the real world many engineers they make the covariance a function of time and when that happens you can you will have a, a varying common gain it won't be the same every time so that's when you have better performance but for this case you don't need to do that you can see very clearly that overall the Kalman filter did reduce noise from the system and you have a much more smoother signal. And next I will be showing you guys now how you can implement this on an Arduino. So here we have a simple Arduino program. You can see it is Arduino by the .ino extension. You can see that I defined my Kalman function first and since Arduino uses floats I have to use that. So first of all I defined my Kalman there. And if you're doing this on an Arduino project, do the exact same thing. This program here, my setup function, I'm just setting up stuff like input pins, output pins and all that. Then I have my task one, which runs indefinitely. So this is my loop function, right? So that's very important. This runs over and over again. My vector U has all the noisy measurements and I'm applying the Kalman filter there on the first value of U. So you just simply call Kalman each time. And you can easily define this Kalman filter function within C++ Arduino by using the exact same method we did before. Just define a float Kalman and just copy and paste the filter function into here. So in Arduino, you can simply do this. It's very easy. You just have to obtain the noisy measurement and then call in the Kalman filter function for each of those values and you will get a better estimate so that's it so guys that's it for the video thank you for watching i hope you guys learned something new about kalman filtering and how it works if these equations seem confusing to you i do recommend you look at the concepts in more detail but generally the kalman filter is very important to know especially if you're an engineer because it, it's used in almost every single application in the world um, there are many variations of the kalman filter 
for example the EKF and the UKF which are extended and unscented filters and they have better performance but this tutorial was just introducing the common filter and I'll be making more videos in the future how you can do this in C++ or any other programming language. With that being said, hope you guys learned something new. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.